give all, all the victims their slash to death. With a knife? No, it sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. The giant scissors once again search for prey. A trail of terror stretches across Europe, from Norway to England. There it is, the Barrow's Mansion. We have to go there and look around, or we'll never solve the mystery of scissor nests. Got to be joking. It's way too dangerous. As long as he's alive, we're not safe anywhere, guys. One after another, <gasps> the horrifying murders continue. through this game of murder alive? Clock Tower. Alright guys, welcome, welcome to my Let's Play Clock Tower. I'm going to hit star first before the intro plays again. Alright, so you guys are wondering, why are we playing this one? Whoop! Guess what guys, it's March. You know what March means. March is Anniversary Celebration YouTube slash Celebration, because my birthday is also in March. Huzzah! So, why did I decide to play this game? Well, rather than, I guess I should explain, rather than Monkey Island 2. Well... I was kind of feeling this game way more than uh, Monkey Island 2. Uh, second of all, this game does hold a, a part of part of my heart. Um, you guys will find out in a second. For those people who have no idea what this is, this is a clock tower for the PlayStation 1. Originally in Japan, known as Clock Tower 2. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but yes, this is released on the PlayStation back in, what, 97? 97, yeah, 97 by Human Entertainment. Human Entertainment created it. A C Entertainment published it over in the States. I don't know if it came into Europe or anything like that, but um, it got a little bit of a name change over here to Clock Tower because Clock Tower originally came out on the um, Super NES and it never came over to America for good reasons. A little too violent, you know, for a Nintendo back in the day. Um, so yeah, this is how we got Clock Tower and the whole namesake got screwed up. Um, so yes, um, this is a, now if you're wondering, it is a point and click adventure game. It is point and click on a console. Way back in the day before they started doing this. Um, I'm going to get into the game. What my plan is, is there's endings. We're going to try to get all the endings. Ignore that one. You guys don't see that one. Uh, we're, I'm going to show you guys all the endings. Ignore A. Ignore Helen's A. Um, so yeah, this game holds a little bit of a little, little dear to my heart. This is my favorite game of the Clock Tower series. Love it a bit. You see why. Um, it was a game I discovered way back when I was really young. Um, fascinated me as a kid. I never got to play it. I kept forgetting that it existed. Really wanted to play it. And then finally, finally got my own copy of it. And super excited. I played the game to crap. I even speedrun this game. Um, yes, I have a live stream. I do speedrun on the side. Um, I'll show you guys my... There's a Twitch link down in the description if you guys want to check it out. Uh, but yes, I do speedrun games on the side. Let's play speedrun life. Perfect dysfunctional triangle. Anywho, enough of me rambling. We're going to start the game. So sit back, enjoy, enjoy this amazing game. earth are you doing, Professor? You mustn't hypnotize her like this. 
She's not ready to remember the murders yet. Helen, the clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. I must know the truth of what happened. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. All right. But remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yes, Professor. Okay. So we got introduced to the two characters, Helen and Jennifer, and Barton. Barton, Barton, however you want to call him. I get those names screwed up once in a while. Just FYI. So, so you know what? Like I said, this game is a point-and-click adventure. I'm moving my mouse. I shouldn't say mouse. It's more of I'm moving the controller around. Look at that. Woo! Anyway, let's do some exploring. Let's check things out. What's in here? Hmm. There is a faint smell of ammonia. Trying to do my best Barton interpretation voice here. What's this? A file cabinet. Patients' records are kept here. What's this? There's a memo stuck between the pages. You found hint number one. Now, throughout the game, there are hints located in certain areas. I would kind of give you hints on how to get certain endings, etc., etc. Um. Oh, I sh you know, I haven't mentioned yet that I'm not playing this blind. I play this game way too much uh, for my own good. So we're not going in blind. Just a heads up. Click on this again. I. Yeah. Sometimes the power to takes place a lot in this game. We have to interact with an object twice to get certain parts here and there. A giant pair of scissors is on the desk. They are a replica of the scissors used by the murderer in the clock tower case. These are like the weapon he used to slash up his victims. Dramatic music. Alright, and then we examine this lovely weird chair couch thingy the clock tower murders the mass murders of over 10 victims in this case how intriguing Jennifer Simpson's only one of the two survivors I have to get information out of her for future profiling materials <laughs> alright let's interact with this just a light switch Okay, apparently Barton doesn't want to save the planet. We're going to leave the lights on. We're just going to piss on out of here now. Apparently Barton doesn't want to save the environment. What a jerk. My laboratory. Lately, I've been doing mostly criminal psychology research. Hmm, the staff's still here. Alright, so let's see what's shaking. What's happening around here? We got, we got the door we can go back through. I don't want to. There's that. We might as well interact with that giant blob of questionable blobbiness. A statue. It is cold. One of the islands found at the scene. Of the clock tower murders. It seems to be hiding some sort of secret. It would be a good idea to get an expert opinion on this. Um, yes, there's a statue. That is not a giant purple blob or something. Uh, let's talk to this young lady with the thick neck. Even though it's not thick neck, it's just polygons. Professor Helen left a few minutes ago, and she looked really angry. Hmm. You know, Helen and Jennifer are really beginning to look like sisters, aren't they? <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you live together. One mustn't let their personal fears get in the way. Jennifer is nothing more than another research subject. Uh, yes. Yes, you're right. Yes, I am talking like that. We are following sentence by sentence in this glorious game. I wish I had a cute kid sister. A cute kid brother. Would be okay, too. And then that's all she says. Oh, Beth. You're, you're so special, Beth. Alright, let's examine that. What is this? What is this orange thing? A stuffed animal. Looks like a prize won at a fair. Okay, let's check out this thingy. What is this? Helen's desk. Nothing else? Nothing else. And look at that. What is this? What is this lovely skull chilling here? Let's go poke at it. 
scissor man's rubber mask. A kind sword and a cheap novelty shop and seems to be fairly popular. People certainly buy stupid things. Like this game. No, I shouldn't say that. I love this game. I love this game so much. <laughs> this is my rubber mask. Okay, so nothing else. Okay, let's talk to this dashing, pixelated, polygon-esque man. Professor, a newspaper reporter is here. Did you have an appointment for an interview? It's about the clock tower murders, isn't it? Hmm, I guess they want to sensationalize this scissor man who really doesn't even exist. <laughs> scissor man, it'd be cool if he were real. Huh? Uh, uh it's just a joke. You're right, Danny. You're right. The man is real. Alright, let's investigate this computer back here. Harris's desk clipped out articles of the clock tower. Stories are scattered about. It seems Harris has gone somewhere. Dun dun da. I don't think it gives me another option. No, it doesn't. I only get the one one little gibber there. Okay. So we're done here. Let's check out the light switch, which we can't interact with anyways. We might as well just leave now. Alright, let's explore this hallway. By explorer, I mean I guess we can't go left. Let's go right. Oh, we can go right. Who's this? Oh, it's Harris. Oh, Professor. A newspaper reporter was looking for you on the first floor. Oh, thank you. Alright, I don't want to talk to him any further. He smells funny. Nobody likes him. He's creepy, too. Let's continue onwards. Alright, so I guess we just click on the elevator. And then we go in the elevator. Huzzah! Now let's see. We can go three, floor two, or floor one. We know we know there's a news reporter on the first floor. Let's try number three. There's no reason to go on the to the third floor. Well, damn it. I hate to waste time. Hmm. I don't, Barton. I want to waste your time. It's been a while since I've savored, savored how much time I'm wasting with you, Barton. Just let me enjoy the savoring. Just mm 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 mm. Anywho, first floor. <laughs> Sorry, when I, I I play this game a lot, so I you know I, let me savor all these things I don't get to click and interact with. Anywho. Oh, professor. I am the one who called you from the Oslo Weekly Weekly News. My name is Nolan Campbell. And this is Tim, my cameraman. It's a pleasure. I'm a bit busy. Please keep it brief. And then we click on them. We totally do. Or we could leave. Oh, we can't leave. Damn it. Well, I guess we'll talk to them. And then I'll get right to the point. Have you been able to figure out who the murderer is? I can't say anything for sure yet because the victim's testimony lacks credibility. Oh. Do you mean the victim that's testifying? That'd be Jennifer Simpson, wouldn't it? Yes, but what about her? Oh, uh, nothing really. It's just that we saw her leaving a few minutes ago. And since we ran into her, we asked her for an interview, but she refused. Well, good for her. You just said her testimony lacked credibility. I know what you are going to say. That monster she was talking about. The Scissor Man. And whether he really exists. Or not. That's it. That's right. That is what our readers want to know. Because the existence of the Scissor Man has become a symbol of terror among youngsters. <laughs> yes, and that's because trashy gossip magazines like. Yours have sensationalized the whole thing. <laughs> Ouch. That hurts. Not much I can say to that, is there? Also, I'd like to point out Tim, our lovely cameraman. Look at that camera. Look at that sexy little invisible tiny camera in his big hands. Oh, look at that. Even the paper, even the pen that Nolan has in the hand. They're, they're fantastic. I think the Hello Kitty designed. Anywho. Well, let's get from the conclusion. 
Let's start from the conclusion. It's a fact that there was a murderer who used a giant pair of scissors as his murder weapon. But that doesn't make him into an immortal monster. We're just dealing with some odd screwball. But what about uh, what about what she said? She was scared. She thought she saw something. Oh, I see. But okay, that's it. Interview's over. There is something I must attend to. Ah, well, okay. I understand. Thank you very much. Sorry, I couldn't be as much help as you as you had hoped. I have to get back to the lab. I'm expecting another survivor of the clock tower murders. He's supposed to be a young boy about ten years old. Also, I'd like to point out, there's only two ways of exiting out of this building. The emergency exit and the doors that Nolan has gracefully popped into. Um, so I don't know how the kid um, got to the office before we did, but, you know, apparently so, you know, I'm just saying. That's because the elevator's super slow. I don't know, maybe. Maybe that's it. Alright, let's go through here. Alright, anything special? Nothing special. Let's keep walking. Oh yeah, if you double tap the mouse, Barton will run. Um, but not too important. Right now. Oh yeah, we can't go that way. Damn it. Alright, let's go in here. Oh, there's Harris. And, you know, the statue. Looks like the only things we can interact with. Oh, we can interact with the door. Let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens when we say, screw Harris. There's still something I need to do here. Damn it. Fine, we'll talk to Harris. He smells funny. We don't like him. I guess we're supposed to talk to him. Professor, the boy that survived the clock tower murders is here. Oh, has he arrived yet already? Yes, he's waiting in the therapy room. See, how did he get there before we got there? How, how, how? I, I would love to know that. Is there something I could do for you? Is there something I could do for you? <laughs> okay, we have to interact with the statue next. Oh, that's right. I still need to get an expert opinion on the statue. I should probably ask Professor Solomon, the head librarian at the Metropolitan Library. Yes, but there was that old butler at the Barrows Mansion named Rick. I'll show it to him first to see if he knows anything. I'm pretty sure he'll live. He lives in the suburbs. I could ask Harris to show it to him. Ask Harris. Hum. Hum. Hmm. Hmm. Which one do I want to go, guys? We go, yay or nay? No, you know what? No. Museum would have more information, I think. Yeah. Alright then. I'll have Professor Solomon at the Metropolitan Library take a look. Okay, that's that. I should probably go to the therapy room. Alright, I'll go to the therapy room. Water your butt in there. Because apparently Survivor magically teleported in there. Not even passing us or anything. Alright. So this is the kid. And his guardian. Let's start talking with them. Thank you very much for coming. How do you do? I am instructor at the Granite Orphanage. I am Edward's guardian. Edward, I thought he completely lost all of his memory. From the shock. Does he remember his name? No, I call him Edward, because not having a name to go by makes things very difficult. Da, 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 da. Now, since this is our first day, will you answer some simple questions for me? Okay, Edward? Now, I want you to honestly tell me everything. You remember about what happened. 
Er, yes. Even though the kid has amnesia, sure, okay, sure. Well then, let's get started. So that is the prologue. Um, now what purpose is prologue set up? Uh, we want to save, of course. This set up the introduction of the characters. All the characters, with exception of one. Actually, two. Yeah, two. With the exception of... Yeah, okay, with the exception of two characters we haven't met yet. Uh, plus, I didn't do it. Um, but we chose our path of which character are we going to... Who we're going to play first. Jennifer or Helen. Um, and also, we had a big decision in that part that will affect what endings we get later on. But for now, we're going to save. I'm going to save over this one. So you can see we play. We play as Helen. Oh, Jennifer's guardian. Oh, guardian. Let's talk to Beth here as we're staring awkwardly at her. Um, anything else I can click on? Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Talk to Beth. You said your hard drive crashed. That's too bad. Yes, I lost all of this morning's data. I hope I can get it fixed sometime today otherwise. I won't get my dissertation. Done. On time. Don't worry. When Danny gets back, I'm sure he'll be able to help you. You're probably right. In the meantime, I'm going to step out for a bit. Would you ask Danny for me, please? Sure. See you later. Okay, where should I go? Well, we have these bunch of yellow dots we can explore and, you know, click on. We have the housing. We have the building. We have the library. We have this hotel. We have the weekly newspaper. We have the police station. Let's go from here first. The campus house where I live. Jennifer should probably be getting home soon. Hmm. Jennifer's gone somewhere. I wonder if she's found a boyfriend. <laughs> huh. Hmm. Wow, Helen. You sure... You sure do some foreshadowing in this game. Hum. This is awkward. Uh, let's go back to the university. Just another breath of, or two of fresh air. Okay, fine. Let's go to the library. Metropolitan Library. Many university personnel use it. All right, let's talk to this dude. Hello, Helen. Mr. Sullivan. What are you doing here today? Oh, nothing really. Just thought I would drop by. Oh, I see. I wanted to show you my collection. I've just added a new piece. Ah, yes. Well, maybe next time. Maybe next time. Okay, let's check out this hotel. Norway International Hotel. Hotel, hotel, hotel. Edward and his guardian are staying here. Oh, look at that hotel. It's very, very fancy. They're here. Oh, Helen. How is it going? Any results from Professor Barton's therapy? No, but we can't give up hope. Sometimes something will jogs one's memory. Yes. We will, will you be staying here long? Mr. Barnett also thought it was a good idea. We plan to stay here for a while. Oh, really? Well hang in there, Edward. Yes, Miss Maxwell. Yeah, you you hang on there, Edward. We will we will definitely hopefully jog your memory. Alright, let's check out the newspaper. I'll be mobbed by reporters if I go over there. Okay, fine, we'll go to the police station. We'll meet my favorite character, my personal favorite character, the police station. I love this character so much. <laughs> you see why. Assistant Inspector Gotts, the person in charge of the clock tower case, is here. 
Well, hey, Teach. Got some new info. No, have you got any leads? Nope. Nothing. That old geezer of yours, he ain't coming clean. Do you mean Professor Barton? Yeah, that's him. You said there ain't nothing straight about the... case. Yes, that sounds like Professor Barton. What about that little cutie? Jennifer, she's still having nightmares. Occasionally. I ain't surprised. She was almost slashed up, too, wasn't she? Well, let me know if you learned something. Okay, bye. Yes, Inspector Gotts. He is my favorite. Like I said, you'll find out why. I didn't realize it was this late. I've got to get back to the university. Okay, time to go back to the university. Boop, 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 boop. Well, I should get home and work my dissertation. All right, let's talk to Danny here. Oh, Miss Maxwell. I replaced your hard drive. Thanks, that's a big help. I'm going down to the lounge for a short nap. What are you going to do? We will all be going home soon. Oh, okay, well, no need to lock up. Okay. All right, so we're at our scenario. Um, not sure if you guys have noticed. Actually, I should have some dialogue coming up here. No, I don't. All right, so that was our first intermission. This game breaks up into um, chapters. You have your intermissions, where you get to do that whole looking at the map, talking to people, and then your scenarios. Scenarios is the one where you can free roam, you can explore, everything like that. Um, Barnum's was technically a tutorial. Like, the prologue was pure tutorial to see how the game worked, what the mechanics were, etc, etc. All that fun stuff. So let's start exploring. Uh, let's check out the curtains. The surrounding campus is lit up by the streetlights. It, it is pitch dark outside. Okay, let's check out this thing. An old air conditioner that doesn't work very well. Okay, what with this? A comic book bought Brought in by one of the staff. Okay. Bunk beds for napping. No one is using them now, but when ac academic society meetings are near, it is quite a scramble to find an empty bed. Okay, let's talk to this person here. Is that you, Baker? Oh, it's you, Helen. Baker's still in the lab. Rose, are you seeing Baker again here? Yes, sort of. Well, no matter how late it is, remember, don't use the university as a motel. Let me sleep a little longer until Baker comes. Okay, fine. I guess she'll sleep a little longer. Bunk beds for napping. Okay, what else can we do here? I guess we can get this. There are some cosmetics on the shelf were brought in by the staff. Don't know which is whose. You guys should label your stuff next time. Okay. So let's open the door here. The woman's lounge can be locked from the inside. Okay, nothing new. So let's hit the lights. And I guess we go to bed. I'll take a quick cat nap and then work on my report. I love the fact how she, you know, cuts her legs cut into the bunk bed. That is always amazing. Oh, oh, knock at the door. Who is that? God damn it. it must be that dude. Well, before I answer the door here, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully, hopefully you guys enjoy the Celeste Player Clock Tower. I hope you guys do. Uh, once again, this is our March special. Let's play. Um, 
once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you see here, definitely give it a like. Give us subscribe if you haven't. Uh, comment as well and check out my other Let's Plays. All that fun stuff. With that, you guys have a good day. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.